Okay, okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. You know social media is public, right? I, I've had this video recommended to me from you guys. I've had this on my uh, YouTube recommended myself. And honestly... If I spill this bottle of water, my desk That's and much. everything on it will get wet. No way! Makes sense. <gasps> oh my goodness! My desk and everything on it has gotten wet no! for reasons I can't understand! How could this have been prevented? Now, in the current state of the internet, no! I think it is crucial that we reinstill the ideas of consequences and cause and effect. I really hope this is a good metaphor, because if not, I gotta clean this for no reason. Because I am sick and tired <laughs> of people not realizing what they're getting themselves into. Bro, stop clicking! He's trying to click or train us. Hi, YouTube, I ate your McDonald's. Why would you do that? By being so open online. I will never understand a human being who is not being held at gunpoint, who makes a video and in the midst of it says something to the effect of, I hope so-and-so doesn't see this. I've got an idea for you, buddy. Don't make it then. Because there's only two- People who are saying, I hope so-and-so doesn't see it, are lying. They want the person to see it. They want to, the person to see it. Those motherfuckers are lying. They know what they're doing. Two outcomes for this. Either the video does well, or it doesn't. And of course you want it to do well. You want everybody to see it. What, why'd you make it then? But like, one of the direct consequences of a video doing- <laughs> This is the first video I'm watching of this guy who's editing and just like- can you call this cinemato cinematography? Uh, it's, it's fucking amazing, what the hell? Well, is that whoever you didn't want to see it is now going to see it. And like, if you didn't want it to do well, then why did you even post it? You could've just, just keep it to yourself, tell your friends, put it in a group chat, I don't know, why am I hearing about it? So why do people act like fools on the internet, get too personal, and talk about things that probably should- Oh my god, that reminds me of the- Oh my god, that- There has been a clip- Recently, that's been, um, making its rounds again, apparently, um, of, um, of, like, an Omega, where she, where a woman was hella racist, and then, like, the guy revealed, like, he's some famous uh, YouTuber or something, like, he took down the mask, and she was like, No, I'm gonna cancel it, I'm gonna cancel it, so I'm gonna catch it. No, no, no. I was absolutely losing a fucking shit about it. Like, holy shit, man. KSI? No, no, no. It wasn't KSI. It wasn't KSI. Um, I don't think. No, 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 no. Could have stayed in the vault. I've got two ideas. The subtle trap of football sharing. All brothers. Some things just uh, no. don't need to be shared with everybody because not everybody has the band. I genuinely feel like he's clicker trading us. With to deal with all of your problems right now. And when you try and get really personal with a person who is not ready for it or is unwilling to do it, the reaction is not flattering. And on that note- Was it Kyo I show speed? Uh, it wasn't I show speed and I, uh, by Kai you mean Kai Sinat? No, it wasn't. Uh, let me, I saw it on Twitter just the other day again. Wait, um, can I find it on YouTube? She was like adolescent. She girl yelling about that she's getting cancelled on Omega. None of these. It was a guy with a fat mustache. That's what I can tell you. It was a guy with a fat mustache. I can't find it. Me? I don't know if you have a fat mustache! Schlatt? No! Schlatt is sideburned. It's not a fat mustache. YouTube search is really bad nowadays? Yeah, I agree. Um, your life isn't the Truman Show. Not every part of your life needs to be broadcast Minus, apparently. Retold or repurposed as content. Some things you can just keep inside. I think 
all of those points can be Inside so voices. accurately portrayed in the following example. I am processing the most triggering breakup I've had in nine years. Why is this... Bro, why are you recording yourself? What? What's the point? Wait, so Bro. my entire family just died in a plane crash? Uh, no, sorry, I just don't really know what to say. Could I actually call you back later? Let's analyze. Funny. The editing is amazing. Why, shall we? I'm sure going through a breakup can be very tough for many people. Arias Bees and Kids to Sleep is calling me. Good night. Thanks so much for hanging and out. And I think many people can relate to that struggle. And I'm I'm almost impressed and and flattered that you feel comfortable sharing this experience with us. But my dear, why would you why would you share it like this? Because I, I think this perfectly exemplifies that there is a difference between being authentic online and just like the death of privacy. Because there are multiple videos Literally. about breakups. You know, people Literally. being very somber, very not my biggest piece of post breakup advice no one told me. I don't want to say serious, okay? but they're being very real about an experience that they've gone through with another sure, person. Yeah, they're that's not, fine. not as many jokes. It's like if they're like like trying to give some advice like this that's fine it's not exactly yeah light but it's not too heavy you feel like this person is being open honest and raw and but they're for being your generous, own sake and yeah. dignity not everything needs to be disclosed and certainly not everything needs to be depicted do we see like the difference in the two scenarios that we've just seen both are yes. essentially the same thing except one is positively received and the other one is not because the second one just seems more real it feels <laughs> he's just like the <laughs> She wanted the guy who broke up with her to see it, probably wanted to get some fucking empathy, empath empathy points, God. Feels like a real conversation you could have with a person, and you kind of see that the person respects themselves by deciding to keep some details private. And because we see that this person respects themselves, oh. we respect them. In fact, we can even feel sure. flattered and honored that they decided to disclose any details in the first place. Yeah, sure. People view social media as a representation of who they are. A mirror of their life, almost. Which is kind of true, to an extent. When you first meet somebody, what do you use to make a judgment? I mean, on social media, people are way more unhinged than they are IRL. I feel like, at least, like, on average. Because, you know... You're anonymous on the internet and all that garbage. And all that garbage. Ugh, masks off and all that shit. ...of who they are. Probably something like how they dress or who they're friends with or how they speak, you know, something like that. Now it seems that you can add social media to that list because somebody's social media presence kind of says something about them. Even if they don't have social media, that idea of, no, I don't, I don't use Instagram anymore, you know, it wasn't good for me. That kind of speaks to that person, good or bad, you make your decision. Part of your first impression of a sure. person... Sure. I don't really use Facebook anymore. Facebook is just for boomers. I mean, who really uses Facebook still? Like... Uh, uh, Facebook has is for grandparents. Facebook is for grandparents. It's not even for parents anymore. It's for grandparents. For example, if this girl had this as her Instagram page, that would make a total sense, right? No, sure, nobody, yeah. Nobody... Um, wait, let me move here. Like your average basic white girl. Sure, yeah, makes sense. We're all in agreement. That's that's accurate, but. Uh... Only for Marketplace? Yeah, that's true. Sometimes I still go on to Marketplace uh, there. What if it was his Instagram yep. account? I know I'd have a question or two. The point is, social media he, he is part of point. how we judge people now. He has a good Are point, these identifiers actually. such as looks? Like, I'm always saying that people do whatever the fuck they want to, but he does have a point. We humans are just very, very, very fucking judgmental. Who we hang out with, how we speak, and our socials, are those what make us who we are? Absolutely not. But you can't deny when you're meeting somebody for the first time, these are the only things you have. Therefore, it makes total sense that you would want all these things to make you look good. So on this whole thing of being yeah, authentic sure. and real, I think it should be noted, it's not vain or fake to want to present yourself well. You dress well and you groom yourself, not because you're afraid to be the real you. People groom themselves and dress well? That's news to me. It's because you're what? a normal adult and showing up to your friend's People class and dinner party in sweat stained sweats is not the move. <laughs> I'm gonna share something embarrassing. 
Chat, I'm gonna share something really, really, really embarrassing. <laughs> so, once upon a star, when I was still working, when I was still working, my anxiety wasn't as bad as it is now. Once upon a star. <laughs> um. So, the company had said there's going to be a dinner. A Christmas dinner. We're going to have a Christmas dinner. But... I was living in Greece. I, I, I can't disclose that. I was still living in Greece, and in Greece, like, everything is, like, more, like, chill, and people are, like, more, like, when people say we're gonna go out for dinner, it's more like they go, like, to, a, like, a tavern kind of thing, and you, like, chill there with people and shit, and, like, there wasn't any dress code or anything, and, well... I was looking forward to it, and then we went to dinner, and I had just gotten my League of Legends t-shirt merchandise, and I had worn that to a formal dinner party. <laughs> I had worn League of Legends... A League of Legends t-shirt to a dinner party, where everyone was dressed in dresses and suits. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that happened. I, thankfully, I had a scar, so I was like trying to like, um... Cover the image up. I was trying to <laughs> cover the image up. God, I, I was so embarrassing. I I drank the wine. I I drank wine. They they gave us wine. I drank wine. I would not have gone through that day, uh, through that evening sober. I would have not gone through that evening sober. No way. I would have gone through that sober through that experience, man. Food was top ten, by the way. Like absolute ten out of ten food. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Raylux, thanks for the follow. So, yeah, that's one really embarrassing story. Um, yeah, moving on. Therefore, it is not inconceivable that your social media presence doesn't necessarily have to reflect the rawest version of yourself. It's okay to put up a bit of a facade just to represent who you would like to be, not necessarily who you are. I think we're all okay with the idea that social media is a highlight yeah, reel. Yeah, sure, We just sure, understand sure. that fact and we don't read into it too much. You know, like, it, I, don't, I don't need to know everything about you, man. Just <laughs> give me... What, what do you mean? I need everything, including your social security number. Everything. No. Give me the basics. It can be easy to overshare when and you're Minecraft. tricked by the illusion of closeness. When you're around someone a lot or you have to interact illusion with them, there's closeness. sometimes there can be a, something lost in translation where you think that, oh, because I see them all the time, we must be close. Think like coworkers and classmates, but really, oh, that yeah, doesn't mean sure. I know you. Sure, sure, I don't even sure. have to yeah, like yeah, yeah. you, I just I have that, to I see you. So although we are constants in each other's lives, it speaks nothing to our level of closeness. And I think this illusion... I especially find it ridiculous when people make Discord servers their entire life. Like, literally living their entire life on a fucking Discord server, man. Oh my god, like, bro, bro, please, please touch some grass. Like, Discord drama is so annoying. So, so, so annoying. It's very easy to That's fall into on the couch. internet. Again, you Honestly, have millions yeah, of fans fuck? singing your praise, adoring everything you do. You think that these people love you. They know you and they trust you. If you're a TikTok, quote-unquote, influencer, they don't. Have you guys seen that clip where one of the, the bigger, like, uh, TikTok influencers who I believe had, like, three mil TikTok followers, no one showed up for her meet and greet? Have you seen that? That, that, that was, like, I don't know, a year or two ago now. Like, it's been a while, but... <laughs> Unlucky. TikTok followers don't mean jack shit. 
TikTok followers don't mean jack shit. You have a deep relationship with them. You can get vulnerable with them if you need to. And for certain creators, that may be more true than Yo, others. Need. But the fact is, in reality, you don't really know them. And they don't really know you. So one day, you get a little bit too comfortable and say something that probably should have stayed in a journal of some sort. And then now, we're all... Oh, in the Discord DMs, but not on public, <laughs> no public social media. Keep it in the Discord DMs. All uncomfortable because of it, and we just, we have to make fun of you now. There's no other choice. You did this. There are more productive methods to dealing with heavy and confusing emotions than to simply disclose them to anyone with ears. Have you considered interpretive the therapist? dance, perhaps? Now, Have I'm you considered saying, a never therapist? Never let anybody in and only talk about the surface level. In your life is a fortress, and anybody who gets even close to your walls, you have the right to immediately shoot down in cold blood. I'm not America? Saying that. I'm saying, be aware of your surroundings and play it by ear. You know what that means in your life. Apply it accordingly. Uh, for example, I hate small talk and I will always try and forge oh, a close I'm connection so if I can. Oh, I'm so bad at small talk. I am so bad at small talk. I am surprised that I can go on talking and just chatting on stream for like easily two to three hours now. Like, you know how the streams go, chat. Like, we can easily just talk two to three hours at the start. I'm so surprised. I mean, can you even consider that small talk? Probably not. Try big talk. Big talk energy. Big dick energy! So, there was this one time where I was with a friend I didn't even really know that well, and we were all hanging out and talking. So I was like, hey, how you doing? Is everything okay? She was like, yeah, well, not really. Oh, also, sorry, like literally cutting into this again. Um, for example, if you meet me like in a Discord voice call once in a high noon. <laughs> Wait, no, once in a full moon. Sorry, once in a full moon. If you meet me in a Discord call and I don't know you too well yet, I am usually very shy and reserved. I'm usually once in a blue moon. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Yeah, I'm usually very shy and reserved until I, like, like, get comfortable. Sometimes it takes minutes, sometimes it takes weeks. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. One time yeah. where I was with a friend I didn't even really know that well, and we were all hanging out and talking. So I was like, hey, how you doing? Is everything okay? She was like, yeah, well, not really, you know, everything is, it's all right, but I haven't been feeling too great these past few days, I don't know. And I see okay. this is my chance, so I'm like, hey, um, we well, trying to get so into it up? or what? What are you thinking? You She's like, yeah, it? let's get into it. And so I respond naturally, all right, tell me about your father. Now, I thought it was funny, my- <laughs> <laughs> friend thought it was funny my sister to whom i retold this story she did not think it was funny but that kind of demonstrates women the whole point that i'm trying to make you know you gotta play it by ear people are gonna react differently you have to move accordingly so if my friend did not laugh when i said that that would have been my cue to cut the jokes apologize and lock in we gotta be self-aware it also be noted that oversharing is typically defined by the context of the situation for example sharing a funny story about your dead parents is okay on tiktok i guess on the first day of class during your icebreaker session what the fuck yeah don't do that I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Yeah, also, don't do don't that. I feel that every single emotion and thought needs to be displayed to the outside world because they it don't. just doesn't. Yeah, keep keep it on your inside voice. Like keep your inside voices on for most shit. Think man. they do? That's very stupid. Because oftentimes feelings change, and that's normal, and that's good. <laughs> that's but once right. you've already voiced a feeling, changing that voicing of that feeling can be difficult, and then changing that voicing of that feeling can be even harder, and then any changing of voicing after that is just annoying. Almost as annoying as the phrase changing of voicing. Like, have you ever had a sure, crush yeah. on a person for like a week and then get over it after I'm trying to think. I guess very early teenage years, I guess. That, that's a normal phenomenon. We've all been there. But are you an idiot and you told that person how you felt? As no, soon as you did? no, 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 that's I have different. not. <laughs> I mean, you moron. Because now you've put everybody in an uncomfortable situation that nobody asked to be in. And it, it was just stupid. If you took a week more to kind of understand how you felt, you were patient and had some sort of self-control, we'd all be better for it. But now we're, we're here and nobody likes
I feel like that's a little bit personal. I feel like it's a little bit personal to him. Like, I feel like this is close to his heart. He had some experience. To hear, why would you do that? So as a general rule of thumb, understand how you feel and what you mean before you put blanket statements out into the world, because it is difficult to take them back. It is most definitely not dis Yeah, if you ever put something out on the internet, it's there forever. It is there forever. And it's gonna be there forever, and the internet always remembers. It's desirable to have to keep amending and changing what you meant, because it's kind of like, like when a company announces a product that is nowhere near being ready, so there's a bunch of delays and bugs and- <laughs> But the cyber truck and the Patches, background. nobody likes that. No one likes that. And look, I just wanna take this time and say, look, I'm sorry. I'm not a therapist, and I hate that every time I do a video like this, it always comes back to your feelings and what's your relationship with your father and everything about your childhood and your upbringing. I'm sorry. I'm not a therapist. I don't have my stuff. Like you're training me. Together. I'm a 20 year old, and I spent two hours on TikTok in my bed this Bro, morning. He's all 20? right. I'm not wow. fixed. It's just the more I do research on actions and behaviors of people on the internet, it always comes back to the human psyche. All right. I'm not a psychologist. The human psyche is quite vast and interesting, to be I'm fair. I'm just trying to. I, I Google things sometimes. Attention economy. There's so many people with father issues venting online. Maybe they should just talk with each other. <laughs> I think all of them need a therapist. <laughs> As we've Post discussed prior life. in other videos, attention is a powerful thing that we all want. And on the internet, it's pretty much a drug. Yes. 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 On the internet? Yes, sure. Sure. Like, my internet face. <laughs> my content creator face. Yes, yeah, so obviously I want the fucking tension. Obviously I want views, like... Yeah, sure. My, um, anxious offline self? Nah, -uh, stay away with the attention. I don't, I don't, no, don't put your eyes on me. Go away. <laughs> Go the fuck away. Don't look at me, please. <laughs> please stop staring. It's making me anxious and I'm gonna vomit. Again, you can literally have millions of people singing your praises and making you believe you could do no wrong. You can see why that's tempting. Mr. Beast? Is that a hint at Mr. Beast? Right? And in a very weird way, for me, I can kind of speak on this just a little bit? There is something about the rush of dopamine for me to make a new video and then to see all the notifications come in of, like, nice comments from people. It's always, it's always nice. I enjoy it. Oh yeah, seeing nice comments and how people are saying, uh, they enjoy the YouTube content and, like, it gets them through their work and shit and they enjoy this and... It actually gives them some hope back into women and all that shit. That 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 that, that is very nice to see. I I really do enjoy every uh, every nice comment and all this time, all this time, all this stuff. <laughs> First time actually catching a stream. Well, welcome in, Skid. What's up? Oi, <laughs> oi. Uh, so. I try to read all the comments, right? At this point, I'm getting so many comments that reading every single one was almost impossible. I respond to some, but if I were well, to responding to each and every one of them, I, 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 I will get no videos out. I wouldn't be able to stream at all that shit. I'm getting so many comments now. I try to read them though. I do try to read all the, the comments, so most of the comments I do read, and I really appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. What was I saying? <laughs> Same. Oh, yeah, I'm a hypocrite. Same. I'm, I'm okay with that. But attention doesn't always have to come from doing something good. In fact, to do that, you'd have to be, like, talented or skilled or disciplined in some way, shape, or form. That's boring. I don't want to do that. Yeah, like, that is boring. School days, who typically got, like, a lot of attention from classmates and faculty? The class clown! On the one hand, there were the smart kids. They got good grades, they were on honor rolls, straight A's, all the teachers liked them. You always knew who to partner with when there was group projects. I was one of the smart kids. <laughs> people voted me anyway. I was smart, but people voted me. I don't know why.
Yeah. Bitch, they always did well in the test. And yeah, because of all that, they got good attention. But then there were also the not good kids. They would always disrupt class and like the principal the knew them phones. on a first name basis. And like there was that one time that they slapped the substitute teacher. We all had like one of those. Right, Slept. that's not just me. Frankly, I'd argue that that kid got way more attention than any smart kid because yeah. shock value is more worthy of immediate attention. <laughs> if you weren't paying attention, you're paying attention now. Shock. Sorry, Lucas. <laughs> Sorry. Value, baby. Look, you can think about it like a math equation. Shock value equals attention equals money and internet fame. Great, simple uh, enough. Yeah. So all you have yeah, to do yeah. is go on your phone and record yourself saying or doing the most grotesque and offensive thing you can possibly think of. No, don't do it, don't but do you're it, not don't going do it, don't do, do it, don't do it, don't Why do it. That? You're well, gonna get canceled. Well, because break down the equation. You see, shock value is really just a variable. The equation for that variable Epic, this is good advice. No, no, it's not. Listen, we're not done with the okay uh, equation. We're not done. Math is still going. Being bad actions minus shame. Look, I'm sure you can think of a terrible action or a terrible monologue or hey, maybe even a terrible word that would get you a lot of attention. on the internet but because you're an adult with a working pulse and an ounce of shame you're not going to do it or at the very least you're not going to do it sure. with the intention of getting a lot of people to look at you doing it societal shame is yeah, so fair. important because it's fair, exactly fair, what prevents fair. you from bursting out with laughter i can think of a few game awards at a funeral or punching an old lady on the subway because she took the last seat i mean sure i guess yeah. What? <laughs> Come Societal again? shame is so important because it's exactly what prevents you from bursting out with laughter at a funeral or punching an old lady on the subway because she took the last seat. I'm <laughs> Why punching an old lady? Don't you bring public shaming back? Honestly, probably for the best, yeah. I mean, sure, I guess being a good person is part of it, but you can't deny that the societal backlash from certain actions and behaviors is enough to prevent us from doing a lot of things. I hate it when people feel comfortable just to say whatever they want, whenever they want, to whoever they want, oh, anytime yeah, that's... they want. I think um... I already said when. Whenever, so anytime is... I didn't need to say that, but you get the idea. Like, I hate reviews and explanations of drama that are so exaggerated that... Oh my god! I can exactly think of one example right now that is actually like as in recent VTuber events. The fucking tiger thing. Yesterday, fucking Ilara was streaming because Hex Juice was talking about this first, about the entire tiger situation and all they're both like, allegedly, this is like this, but this is only allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. And it's, and she had done so much bad faith arguing, man. It was so much bad faith arguing. Both Hex Juice and Alara were like, mass reporting doesn't get you banned on YouTube. And you know what their definition of mass reporting, reporting is? You know what? Their definition of mass reportation of mass reports is when one person reports multiple times which is just wrong that is not the definition of mass reporting mass reporting is when there's a mass of reports from any amount of people mostly from a lot of people that's what it's the masses reporting and she kept and she kept showing that fucking tiger clip where tiger said oh, oh my god i I probably won't have the entire quote correctly, but basically, Tiger said, based on lies, like, um, that Marina and Nox Taku and the Stalker and all his ex-mods and all that shit, uh, are responsible because of their lies. Based on lies, he got deplatformed, which is true! Because, like, she kept saying this is untrue. She kept saying this is untrue. She kept saying, uh, Tiger is directly blaming, 
uh, these people for it. Well, no, that's not what Tiger is saying. She was bad faith argument. Uh, oh my god, I'm going off of, of a rent here, man. <laughs> like, uh, this was so, such bad argumentation, man. Like, the reason there's mass report, the reason there's mass reports, the reason there's a lot of reports is because Tiger's image was damaged thanks to Marino and Nox Taku, and now to this day, people still believe Tiger is a PDF file. To this day, they still believe it. So, of course, people will go out of their fucking way to report them and get them deplatformed after they've seen people rallying for it. Like, what? What? And both Hexus and Alara are like, mass report doesn't cause a YouTube ban. It was only done by one person. Do you have any proof that it wasn't the masses reporting? Do you have any proof that there was more people reporting it? And she constantly kept saying, oh, oh, it's only allegedly. This is only alleged. This is the issue. This is the fucking issue, though. You are reporting the news. Why are you reporting on alleged things? Because people are just gonna run with the story anyway. I've had people in my comments already saying that all oh, mass report doesn't cause YouTube bans. I've already had people commenting that in my videos. Already since her stream happened. It's making me so fucking mad. Oh my god. It's making me actually so fucking mad. Ooh. I went off on a tantrum there. Jesus. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Whatever description you're making is not even really accurate, and it's just mean at this point. And if you point it out, that person will just say, what, I'm just expressing my genuine opinion that may be so, but you're also being a jerk. Being authentic and being yourself does not give you free reign to treat people any way you want just because you're yeah. so real like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can be an asshole. You can be a fucking asshole, right? That doesn't make it right. Like, that doesn't make it right that you're an asshole. Like, people may respect you for certain things, sure. Like, we all know Asmongold. Asmongold's an asshole, but he doesn't go out harassing people. Like, I honestly think best example there, Asmongold is an asshole, but he doesn't go out harassing people. There is a way to be honest and real with people while still maintaining their dignity and showing basic respect for others. I mean, sometimes this behavior gets called out, but I'd say for the most part in my experience, if somebody is bashing something that the internet has already decided they don't like, they can essentially say anything. Doesn't matter if it's fair. Sometimes it doesn't even matter if it's true. If we decide we don't like it, or you're trying to convince us not to like something, it, it'll get attention either way. It doesn't really matter if it's factual or fair or right or just or insert another adjective. Because all publicity is good publicity. And attention- Which is just not true. Which is just not true. As again, the tiger situation. It's just not true. And good or bad, in some way on the internet, it's weird, but all attention is seen as approval in a way hold on let me let me explain that also another example would be ukulele girl ukulele apology girl you ever heard of her before the apology i didn't because at its core you are telling the person hey we as the internet are going to interact with this anytime you do it if you keep doing this, we will keep talking about it. It therefore incentivizes the person to keep doing the thing, good or bad. The only the thing also with uh, drama content creation is that, um, sure, it gets you a couple eyes initially on you. Sure, sure. But it doesn't last. People don't stick around. If... You create drama and people come to check you out because of the drama. Sure, they'll be there for a tiny bit, but they will not stick around. If you're just an asshole and if you just harass people and are just mistreating people, people will not stick around. They come to see the shit show, sure, but nah. -uh. You gotta make good content actually for people to actually stick around. And I think 
That's what a lot of people just don't fucking understand. They just really think, oh, publicity is good publicity, which is just not true. The only form of disapproval that actually works on the internet is to not give it attention. Like, have you ever made a video that got like almost no views? I myself have done it. Sure, yeah. I do. Many times. If you have, you know that feeling of never wanting to do that again? Like, it's kind of embarrassing. Like, I put all this work into this and nobody's even watching it. I don't want to do this. I mean, that's why people have to make videos about, no, if you're going to start your YouTube channel, keep going. Don't pay attention to the numbers. Just... You have to pay attention to the numbers. Keep doing it for the love of art. But it's like really hard to do that when there are three views average. That feeling that you're feeling... Like... I'm gonna say something which some people might think is mean, maybe, but it is it is just a fact. If you are a content creator or a streamer, a YouTuber, whichever, and you try to create content, try to make this a living thing, like make this your, uh, your career, basically. Try to make content creation your career, and you are streaming almost daily or almost every second day or whatever like you have like a really good streaming schedule and you keep at it you put out videos but it never takes off i'm sorry but the issue isn't the work you put in the issue is you you are more than likely just boring to watch and i'm sorry to say this but if you actually put in the work, it will take off. It will take off eventually. But if you just... Given that you're entertaining. Given that you're entertaining. But if you're not entertaining... What are you doing? Like, if you just, if you just want to do it as a hobby, sure, sure. Go for it. Fucking go for it. If you're doing it as a hobby, just for the fun, yeah, sure, absolutely. No issue. But if you try to make this make this a living and you're not entertaining i'm sorry to tell you but there's an inherent issue with you in that case like if you actually do put in all the work and if you say you put in all the work and you're still not growing it God forgive, you actually are entertaining. Then you're 100% not putting in all the work. Gonna show off that VTuber booba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely gonna show off the booba. Good old gotta, yeah. A lot of tiny channels tended to be to bore me. It was painful to even stick around to help when I had other options with my time and work. Yeah, there it is. Like, who the fuck is gonna watch someone who's just staring at their screen and not talking while they're playing a fucking game? Like, literally, for example, <laughs> Chat, if you've played League of Legends, you've more than likely come across a person who has posted their Twitch link in uh, the League of Legends chat. More than likely, you've come across this. You open it, and all you see is someone speaking in a different language, not even in English, they're speaking in a different language, to someone on their Discord. They're not looking at chat. They're... Ugh. Just so fucking boring. Like, I'm sorry, but it's just so boring. There's a reason just chatting on average performs better than games. That is also true. Like, nowadays, uh, just chatting is just. It is in the end a little bit about the parasocial shit. It is. Like, it is about, like, having a conversation with the actual streamer. Like, actually having a conversation and interacting with a person. It is to a degree parasocial, but I think it is. A, to a healthy parasocial degree, as long as, as it doesn't get too personal in between the viewer and the streamer. So, yeah, that, that, that's that. Holy shit, I went off off a couple of on rants in this video. <laughs> you can do that to somebody else. The best tool you have on the internet to stop them from doing something is to ignore it. So yeah, if there's somebody on the internet that you really don't like, uh, don't give them a dislike or a hate comment. Just block them fusing to give them attention yes is the best yes you have. yes 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 this so much let's hear it again somebody on the internet that you really don't like uh don't give them a dislike or a hate comment just block them 
refusing to give them attention is the best defense you have. So much! There's so much! Oh my god, Twitter doesn't understand this. No one on Twitter understands this. Holy shit, no one on Twitter understands this. There's so many people, and now that here, I have an example for this directly. AI art on Twitter! There was this example that I was kind of involved in, but not really. Like, I was like, I was playing devil's advocate in the end. I was trying to see both sides. I was trying to see both sides. I was hoping the person was actually an artist and not an uh, an AI uh, person, you know? Um, to me, they look like a freaking beginner. To me, they look like a freaking beginner. Vicious Arkan gifted a there tier was... 1 subscription to Macy Call Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, there were... Posting some art, it turns out they were like tracing AI art in the end, that's what the end result is. I w but I was like trying to tell people that there's beginners like that. There's just beginners like that that are just shit, okay? And people just didn't understand. Like there were so oh, hundreds of people, of artists, of artists account on Twitter who kept saying... Uh, why doesn't my art get this much attention? Well, well, but AI art gets so much attention. Uh, you want to know why? Because you guys give it attention. This is why. Because you guys are giving the AI art attention. You guys are interacting with it. You are commenting. You are quote retreating it. You are retreating it. You are complaining about it. And giving people more exposure to this. It's your own fucking fault that AI shit is getting more attention. Like, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's how it is. Just block them. That's what I do. If I see someone I don't fucking like, I block them. Out of fear. I don't interact with their fucking account. I block them. I see someone... Um, I see someone making a hit tweet like getting i don't know like close to a million views or or a hundred thousand views or whatever while they're a small account and then the next comment is like oh shit hit tweet go support this and this organization most likely it's um uh the freaking israel palestine situation more than likely it is and those people are all those people that just live in America and are fucking privileged off of their fucking ass and only do this fucking shit for clout. And only fucking do this shit for clout because before this, like before, what was it, last year, no one gave a single fuck. And I blocked them. I don't want to see that bullshit. I don't want to see the bullshit, man. I just don't. But kids, if you don't spam them, how can I fill the void inside of me? Happy pills. Happy pills. So in the end, understand how you are presenting yourself. Show basic respect for other people. And if you are going to be stupid and bad, do everybody a favor and just do it at home. I still have wet napkins from the beginning. Nice. And here's another example that I can give you right away about one of those artist cloud chasers. Uh, this isn't about AI, this is Israel-Palestine situation, chat. This one... There was an artist, I've talked about this one before. I don't remember if I made it a video, or like, said it in a video before, but I have talked about it on stream. There was an artist... Um, I would say end of last year-ish, around that time, where I was just starting out on Twitter again. Where they have said... I am taking commissions and going to donate all the money to uh, help children in Palestine. Fast forward two weeks. I am so sorry, guys. I have lost my wallet, so I will need to take the money from the commissions for myself. Yeah, about that. Fastest block in my life. Fucking fastest block in my life, man. Yeah, piss off. What do you mean you've lost your wallet? How is losing your wallet meaning you lose all your, your fucking money? Like, piss off. <laughs> Honestly, just piss off. I said this is what social media does to you. It, it is, man. Oh my god, what a fucking joke.
What a fucking joke. Well, that 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 will do it. That's my rambling. Thanks for watching YouTube. And uh, hopefully see you on the next video on stream. Bye YouTube. Bye.